Welcome, everybody, to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. As you know, I talk about four different types of freedom, time, financial, location, health, freedom. In that light, I'm always interviewing entrepreneurs, investors, business owners to bring you the cutting edge ideas to inspire you, motivate you, and get you on your journey. So today, we have a special guest, Joe Rocky, and he's... um an experienced podcaster. He's also a business owner and coach. Um, he's a sales expert and um, a diehard Steelers fan. So today's going to be a really interesting conversation. It's going to be about selling, uh, business owners, uh, promotion, running a business. So I'm happy to welcome Joe on the show. Welcome. Well, yes, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Yeah, I know we had connected through Podmatch and mm-hmm. looks like you're calling in from Pittsburgh. Um, mm-hmm. Tell us all about, you know, what you do, your business, and um, we can go from there. Yeah. So I have, since the time I was 25, created over 15 different businesses in basically 11 different industries. So I, I have figured out the most important thing that I'm glad you emphasized is one of your freedom points, which is time. And it doesn't really matter what industry you're playing in. If you know how to build a business structure, a business system, time will flow through itself. And, you know, I absolutely love having conversations about that. As you mentioned, one of the things we do do is business coaching. And this is probably the most common request business owners have for us. Give me more time. Um, It's not give me more money, which tends to happen, but it's actually just give me more time so I can relax. And then the other one in there um, is the stress reduction of, I want to be able to have peace. Like I don't need to think about, is my business on fire 24 seven? I want to know it's in safe hands and we build a good structure. So absolutely. I I, am glad that that you're able to to bring this kind of information to a lot of people out there because it's, it is incredibly important. Yeah. It's quite interesting. I was talking to another uh, guest on the show and we we're talking about starting a business and uh, you know, one of my clients, they're like, they want to start a business to have more free time. <laughs> so yeah. We, uh, we both chuckled them um, because they don't really know what they're getting themselves into. So that's a very real and important point. You know, nothing is born easily. Um, <laughs> I think that that, that that's an easy way to say that is that Yes, it, you're, you're going to be putting a lot of resources in one capacity or another <laughs> into it. Either you have a ton of cash sitting around or a ton of time. That tends to be the two options people have. And there, there's ways to make it where it's effective with less time. But in the beginning, the installation phase requires effort and time. There's just no way around that if you want to build a successful structure correctly. So, we you know, tell us. Um, so one thing is... Um, really you talk about the four most important actions anyone can do to have mm-hmm. a successful life and you call it a life hack i'm curious mm-hmm. to hear about that so and again this is applicable for all elements of life because it doesn't really have to do with business or sales really um the, the first one is you have to be knowledgeable about what you're going to be talking about and there's some really great extra benefits that come from being knowledgeable even if it's just in one really specific thing, like I know every single thing in the world about Star Wars, which on the surface, like might not be applicable. Like I can't go and eat because of Star Wars knowledge, but what it gives you is it gives an inherent sense of confidence. And when we're talking about confidence, it is essentially the only universal trait across all of mankind that is attractive mm-hmm. confidence. And, and that really breeds from intelligence and knowledge and just confidence in yourself and in your abilities. And the root of that is knowledge and information. So that's the first thing that you can do to make yourself better. The second thing is treat everyone with an innate justice. And obviously each type of relationship has different parameters. You know, you're gonna treat your children different than you treat your parents or maybe your siblings or coworkers, and that's normal. But whatever the appropriate answer is for that given relationship, you treat it that way. You know, you're not hiring your assistant based upon does it click some box so people will like coming in here or why look good on a PR statement. You click your you choose your assistant based upon for the amount of resource I'm willing to spend on this position, is this the best person I can get? End of discussion. And as long as you're doing stuff like that, it really flows through. And then on the personal side, am I spending more time with this person to try to 
gain something from them, extract something from them in a negative way? Mm. Or do I actually want to create a positive friendship? And that's justice. And that's something, again, totally applicable in all capacities. The next one is courage. And I don't mean courage like I'm a Marine and I'm about to run into battle. Um, certainly that that's the extreme version of this. But really what courage is in this context is when you have a feeling of something that's going on and figuring out a way to get it out of yourself into the world. So even if it comes out a little awkward or stuttery or, or whatever, just figure out a way to practice it and get it out. And the more you do it, the better you are at it. And that is incredibly important um, for all business owners to create a culture where everyone within your company can do that. Obviously, you want this in all aspects of life. But if there are people within your company that are afraid to tell you the truth because you will go off the rails or whatever, you will not have a successful company in the long run. And then the third one is humility. And this one is something as America we really are bad at. But you need to be able to know what humility is. Humility is not, I make myself the smallest, the most insignificant person in the room, nor does it make everyone think they need to hear every single word that I have to say, which is how we fail on t Twitter, especially. <laughs> so you, having the balance of, yes, my position means that I have to make these types of decisions as a business owner, but knowing the overall totalness of, this is my place and where I stand in the world and in bigger pictures and our context of your religion and all that stuff. That is the four things, humility, courage, justice, intelligence, and those will make your life better in all capacities. Mm, interesting. And then uh, what's curious, um, what's really interesting is you talk about, um, you know, being a business owner and building a sales team and how to mm -hmm. overcome the fears of a salesman. How do you address those questions yeah so any business we have sales are the most important thing so to, to go through sales and what they are in the total funnel take you outside your realm of being a physician into something more neutral like a bakery there are three fundamental things you need to have as a bakery people need to know you exist and want to come to you step one when they're there they want to be there long enough and like it enough that they give you money in exchange for your good. And then part three, you have to be able to deliver on a good donut or a good bread or whatever you're selling at your bakery. So where a lot of people get in the mistakes is they only focus on the back last one. I'm going to make the best bread. I have the best recipes in the world. But the reality is, is that that's not the least important part, but it's not the most important part. And what really matters is, are there enough people coming in into my door because you can have the worst bread on the planet. If you have 20 million people who want it, it doesn't matter. It's going to take care of itself. So it's a fear and frustration you have is if you're only working on making the absolute best product, but there's no one who's coming to want to see it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also a problem that podcast hosts have. I'm making this great podcast, but no one's coming to listen to it. Well, we got to focus on the first two things. And it's something that you really got to overcome. And it makes you kind of question things a little bit more in, in, in a deeper way. Does it matter if I have the absolute best icing? Or does it matter that when people come in, they like the smell of my bakery and it's clean and they want to stay here longer and maybe peruse more? You know, is it worth it to create a marketing campaign and a branding side of my business? And those are the types of things that when you're creating your, your structure for your business are more important than at the end of the day, what the actual icing is on top of your cakes. Mm. Interesting. Cause, uh, cause in, um, really in like it's entrepreneurship and business ownership is different from, um, you know, a regular employee mm -hmm. and, um, you know, regular employee can't fail cause you'll get fired, but, um, you know, business owner, the faster you fail, the, the, the more quickly you learn it, so there's a quote I read is like fail your way to success. You fail early and fast and often, and you can get to success earlier. So, yes, as long as you have going back to the previous answer, humility on your side to recognize that it could possibly be my fault. That's making the mistake here. If you're one of these people who makes every problem in your life is from the outside, it will never work no matter how many times you fail. So that's part of blending the, in the, uh, the, the two different answers there. 
tell us about um this idea because what's really interesting is um this idea where people have like when you're first for example first starting a podcast or a blog and they feel like they have to spend hours and hours on the perfect uh, first post and you know mm-hmm. and then they post a couple of times and then they get disillusioned so tell us about that this this um uh, this dichotomy yeah no that, that's real and that's 100 percent of frustration people have because i put my heart and soul into this thing and for whatever reason it didn't get clicked and again that, that goes back to the, the prior part of the bakery it's, you can have the greatest thing but people need to know you're there and need to want to have to care that you're there and the difference and the disconnect most people have is when they're involved in their content of their posts or their blog, it's about the X's and O's. It's, it's about the, is the content correct? But people don't buy based upon content. They ba- buy based upon emotion. So are you writing your titles and pulling people in with the upside incentive of the emotion of, Yo, you're going to be better off. You're going to have a smile on your face when you're done reading this. You know, you're going to like this. You're going to feel better. And if you're able to bring that type of emotion in your advertising, your branding, you're better off. And one thing I tell for all my clients that are podcast hosts um, is that have your actual logo reflect your soul. Because at the end of the day, your soul will come across in the podcast. You know, there's no way to do them and not have that happen. Mm -hmm. You want your image, well, obviously to include what the podcast title is, but to have some form of the essence of you in there. And in doing so, you're going to be branding yourself through the emotion that will relate to your individual listeners. Because that's really what most listeners and buyers in general try to reflect. They want to go to someone that they feel that they're on the same level with equally. And obviously there's a billion different levels. So you're never going to get everyone, but you'll get your group and you'll be a part of where you want to be. And there's a lot of arguments to say that's all mankind's trying to accomplish. Just get to my group and people I want to be with. And the easier you say, this is us over here, easier it is to get yourself a a regular audience and a a growing audience of that. Yeah. And what's interesting is, um, you know, talking to you and um what's interesting is you have you know you're built you're building systems and so the first thing is sales and then talk about building a successful and winning culture and what that means yeah so you obviously need to have everyone on board with what you're doing so there's some certain facts in the game that just apply to any employee you know every employee has a job for one of two reasons either a they are doing something the owner cannot do for whatever reasons, either he doesn't have time or that particular expertise, or the owner doesn't want to do it. So those are the only two reasons if any employee job exists. So you start with that standpoint, and it's then how do I make the individual employees want to do something that I really don't want to do? And some of it is just, well, personality types are going to want to be attracted to one position versus another. You know, I personally do not like sitting on doing data mining on the internet. Like (laughs) that's not my thing. I like talking to people, figuring out solutions and stuff like that. But I've had many partners throughout the year that absolutely love that. They never want to be interfered with. They're the most introverted people on the planet, but they love diving in data. Cool. So it's something that doesn't mean the ownership has to like it. It means that the individual lines up with what they want. So the most important thing you can do with this is when you're articulating the position in the first place, be as accurate as you can be with what you see it. As far as this is what the employee will be doing, because that's what creates the culture is I'm going to be doing this. I'm in a fit for exactly what I thought it was, because if you try to tell people they're doing this, but you're really going to have them do that, it's almost instantly going to fail and blow up in your face because people are going to feel they got lied to. And you want to have as much transparency and openness. And it starts with, this is what you're here to do. If you don't want to do it, fine. Um, then we just get someone else who does. And you also have to be realistic with maybe what I thought the position was going to be three years ago, didn't end up being that. And just be honest with everything involved. Like, are you okay with the direction that this turn um, now that we've actually done it? You know, we see what it looks like because obviously in startups, we don't have three years of history of what this position will be. We're kind of learning as we go. And again, there's a group of people that love being trailblazers. And then there's also a group of people that want to know this is the lane. I will stay in my lane. 
And it's just about finding those people. And they will come to you the more detailed and transparent you can be about the position. And that's really the way they build culture. Great. You know, everyone's on the same page. They know what they're doing. And they ultimately chose to be there and wanting to do that. Yeah, that's a wonderful, uh, so many wonderful like gems and um, we could go into a master class on that. And I do them on that. One of the problems with business owners is hiring good people. It's like, um, mm-hmm. you know, either they'll quit or they'll, you know, not show up or, uh, you know, for various reasons. And how do you get better employees without raise, uh, drastically raising your expenses? Yeah. So that's obviously a very important answer for all of us out there. But it's actually the people who can answer this question are the ones that create the best business structures. So What you want to be able to do is not put yourself into a box in terms of your compensation. So many people will just stick with the basic hourly rate because it's what everyone's used to. It's what everyone does, but it's not the most effective way. So to give an example of this, say that you were in charge of running a hotel and the thing that you cared about was the rooms get cleaned to a certain amount of quality and they get cleaned quickly enough. So speed and quality, that's what we're trying to blend here. And it's kind of what you try to blend in basically every job. So how can we incentivize people to do this and to do it in a way where the total amount of money out of my pocket is better? So Mm -hmm. an easy way to do that is you give a flat out commission-based schedule. You get paid based upon the quality of the room you do. If it's an A quality, you get X, B is a little bit less, C is a little less, so on and so forth. And then you let them take care of the speed themselves. Because there's a certain element out there that says, hey, if I learn how to master making this room an A plus grade and I can get it done 40 minutes faster, I get to leave 40 minutes faster. So Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the business owner is getting exactly what he wants. Faster rooms, A plus quality. Is he paying a higher hourly rate than he would have been? Absolutely. But is the total amount out the door less? Yes. Is his culture better? Yes. So you have actually spent less money overall and improved your culture just by innovations of how you look at how are we compensating people. And the more direct action to what you want your employee to accomplish to their paycheck, the Mm -hmm. better the system will be for everybody involved. As long as you're correct in building the correlation of this is what you get paid for and this is what I want. Wonderful conversation. Um, How can people, um, I know a lot of people may be interested in checking you out on social media. I know you have a YouTube channel contacting you. Mm-hmm. The, the easiest way to find me is elitebusinessconversations.com. That's three words, one URL, elitebusinessconversations.com. Anyone who wants to explore what it would be like working with me, I do 10 minute free you know, discovery chats essentially. And you can just click for one of them in there and we'll sit down and have a chat. Wonderful conversation. You're very knowledgeable. One, and um, for all the listeners out there, be sure to check out um, Joe's resources in the links and show notes and check out his uh, EliteBusinessConversations.com and, mm-hmm. um, and as well as his YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. So thanks so much. And um, we look forward to 2023. Yes. Thank you very much for having me.